we had uh, a visit one time from Manchester City, wanting me to go down and play there. And uh, while my mother wasn't very keen, I went on a trial because I had a pal who was down there. And I mm -hmm. thought I was going down there for a few days' enjoyment. But anyway, when I came back, in the meantime, they'd influenced me to sign for them. <laughs> and, they did uh, it even in those days. Oh, they? they did. Oh, they did. Oh, they did. Oh, they're, they're always good talkers. You see. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I remember going back home and my mother being very upset about me signing for Manchester City. And of course, they decided uh, then that uh, she would wait and see. And of course, she, uh, they have never gone to America. Did you have any kind of affinity for, for Manchester, such as you now have, or was it something that grew on you? I mean, did you like Manchester when you first came here? No, I can't say I did. Uh, coming down about 17 and a half, just under 18 year old, and the first time coming from home, uh, it is a big thing, really, and uh, this is probably why I have a feeling for boys coming away from their respective homes. I did come down, I, uh, I knew I was tr trying to better myself, but uh, the place was strange and for a time I, uh, I wasn't too happy about it. Were you a success Were, as a footballer? No, not, not immediately. I, uh, I had a form of a complex at the time. I think it was in form of an inferiority complex in the respect that uh, I thought the players, the first team players were gods. Mm. But I got round to, and during this spell, uh, I didn't do too well. It was probably the best part of the year and a half, mm. kicking around. And at one time, I thought about going home. But about uh, chucking the whole thing in? No, that's right. Very yes. seriously, did you think about it? I did indeed. Uh, as a matter of fact, one night I had, one Sunday night, I remember I had uh, my case packed. And I thought to myself, I must get off out of here. I was so disappointed disillusioned in every way and uh, we had a, I was in lodgings with an older player who was in the first team a chap called Phil McCloy who when he came in and saw me with this case he says uh, what's this you're doing I said uh, well I feel as though I'm getting nowhere here and uh, he says what's the case pipe for I said I'm going to go home he says you're going to go home and what are you going home to don't you be a silly now you give it a little more time things will work out and of course he talked me into staying. It was a good job he did too, Cliff. Are you pleased <laughs> he did? <laughs> I'm delighted <laughs> he did. <laughs> he stayed, played for City and Liverpool, cup finalists, then wartime international, and then Matt was back at United as post-war manager with no ground but a successful team. Runners-up four times, then league champions in 52, and then Matt Busby brought on the Babes, replacing eight of that championship side in one fell swoop. When I, when I think back, Cliff, about that decision, <laughs> I often wonder how I did it myself. We had, we had actually won the championship, and we started the season, a new season, mm. and wasn't doing too well. Now, some of the boys were going over the top, but it was a tremendous thing to say, all right, now, uh, I must actually take a number of these players out, put young ones in. But over the time, I'd had the opportunity of trying, we'd started a youth system and from the start, and it was there, and you could see players of caliber there. But they were still very young. And uh, it got to the stage, I started thinking to myself, will I do it, will I not? Well, perhaps I was helped. We played uh, a friendly game in Kilmarnock in Scotland on the Wednesday, following us winning against Aston Villa. One mm. nothing, one, but I was not satisfied. I wasn't happy about it. And we played this match, and I've put a lot of these young boys in, and we won four nothing. And I remember the following day, walking along the golf course, and these things were turning over mm. my mind, and I said to myself, well, they won four nothing, but what was the strength of the four nothing win? And this went on for a couple of days. Will I put them in, will I not? Mm. And all of a sudden I said, right, I'm going to put them all in. And it was at Huddersfield the following Saturday, and I think we had uh, Alan Chilton for experience at the back, Jack Rowley to hold them together, and uh, I think Stan Pearson was all yeah. on. The rest yeah. were all the Duncan These were three of the yeah, championship that's side, that's and all the eight were news. Were new place. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. So it, it was uh, 
It was a big decision, but uh, sometimes you've got to face these yeah. things. Uh, and uh, as I say, it worked out the right way. You've made throughout your life a number of very big decisions, one way and another. Uh, one thing does interest me, particularly as we're now talking about the young boys and what were called the Busby Babes. When you got some of these young boys there, they were just out of school, 15, 16 years old, as it were. Mm. How did you feel when you'd got them to a point of believing in themselves as footballers and then deciding that they weren't? In other words, you, you had the ability, you see, didn't you, <coughs> to create a desire in a boy to become a member of Manchester United. Mm. And then it was your decision to sort of snap this off and chuck him, as it were, almost onto a footballing scrap heap at 19, 20. How do you feel when you do well, this? Well, of course, this is a terrible, <coughs> this is actually a terrible feeling. There's some, uh, a lot of difficult things in, in a manager's life. And one is tell, uh, probably, uh, in this case, a young boy coming who has ability and who has uh, the chance of becoming a footballer. Now, one can never guarantee this. Mm. One can say he's got natural ability. Probably you can do it once in a case of a Duncan Edwards. You say, there it is, and there it is. And there's nothing more you can say except he's going to do it. He's he'll, be, it. he'll be one of the greatest <coughs> footballers the yeah. world's ever seen. Yeah. yeah. But some boys show you that promise, and they give you it, and then all of a sudden, probably 18, 19, they lose it. And you feel it's a, it's a very sad thing, it's a very difficult thing to get around to tell them. But it's only fair that the boys should know, and you've got to be, you've got to be honest with the boy and the parents and everything else. And uh, this is one of the nasty jobs a manager has. How do they react when you tell them, when you get them in the quiet of your office and tell them? I, I think generally the, the, the boys themselves are, uh, they, they're disappointed, they're upset. As, as upset as probably I am in this, in this situation. But uh, they, they, they generally, I, have, I never uh, found any problem with them accepting it. I think they've probably seen a little bit themselves looking at it properly, saying, all right, I'm not doing too well here. But I always say it, we have the opportunity, we, we, it's possible that we could be wrong, and probably if they moved and tried somewhere else, it may, it may come blossom mm. out again. Yeah. You then built this great side that was really on the edge of absolute greatness. It never, I felt, ever reached it, but it was on the edge. You had uh, Duncan Edwards, you had uh, Eddie Coleman and so on, yeah. all these great players. Yeah. And then came this terrible Munich tragedy in which you lost. Yeah almost the core of this young side. Yes. Do you remember now, looking back to those days you spent in that Munich hospital, exactly how you felt? Uh, yes, I do remember. Uh, it was a terrible, terrible experience. And uh, I remember my feelings when I did come to a bit of sanity and realized the whole situation. And the last thing I thought at the time would be that I'd ever be associated with football again. That was out. That was definitely out. Uh, it was a terrible mental uh, time. Mentally, it was a terrible time. Uh, and I remember one day, the family, of the daughter who stayed with me, Jane, my wife, and uh, it would probably be a few weeks when uh, someone came in talking about football, and uh, they'd known not to discuss anything at all at the time. And all of a sudden, uh, Jane had said something about, uh, look, you know, this is your life, this is something you've got to do, you've got to face it, uh, you've got it in your mind, and these boys probably would want, it, want you to go back, and all, all on their lines, and it started a little seed again. And I got this little bit of verge saying to myself, all right, yes, I think I'll try and go back. And as the days progressed, I said, yes, I'm going back. 